of all the kings have ownership to all of each and everything. Indeed, I am your slave, created from the dust, a traveler in this world. I shouldn't feel such lust. In the name of Allah, the All Merciful, the Ever Merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and uh, sisters, viewers of our program and your program, of course, our includes both you and myself, um, clearing the mist. In our previous uh, episode, we uh, started the six articles of belief or the six articles of uh, faith and we just enumerated them and said a few words about each one of them in this episode we are going to stop at each one of them to say more about them as a reminder let's just have a look at the screen please join me the six articles of belief are belief in Allah, Al Malaika, angels, Al Kutub, books, Al Rusul, messengers, Al Qiyamah, resurrection on the last day, and Al Qadr, destiny or fate. Now, we are going to cover each one of these in some detail. We have already said about Allah, Allah is the creator, and we have touched upon the fact that we prefer the word Allah, which is the Arabic word for God, for the reason that it cannot be the word cannot be or has never been given to anyone except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it can never be pluralized as the word God it can never be made feminine as in goddess al malaika angels islam is clear on the nature of angels in that they are messengers of Allah then angels are creatures who can or who are sent by Allah as his messengers. They have no free will. Unlike man, unlike a human being, as we said when we dealt in the previous episode about belief in Qadr or in fate or in destiny, we said that this doesn't mean that we are not as human beings um, responsible for our acts. Of course we are. We believe in destiny and fate in things which we have nothing to do about, like who our parents are, what color of complexion we may have, uh, whether we are male or female and so on and so forth the greatest majority of other things we are accountable for then unlike man who is and by man here we mean a human being in general regardless of gender a man or a woman male, male or female angels don't have a free will they cannot do anything out of their own will and they can do only what Allah orders them to do a major difference between men or human beings and al-malaika or angels like human beings they can be sent as messengers but unlike human beings they don't have any free will. Al-Qutub, books, 
not only books, but revealed books, books which were sent down or which were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a Muslim, one of our articles of faith is belief in all the books sent by Allah, in, of course, including the Quran, the Torah, which was revealed to Moses or Musa, blessing and peace be upon him, peace be upon him, to Jesus, who received the Injil or the Gospel, and of course, Prophet Muhammad, blessing and peace be upon him, who received or on whom um, or to whom the Quran was revealed or on whom the Quran was sent down. Muslims believe in all the books revealed by Allah, and these include the Torah. The Torah is the Arabic word for Torah that was revealed to Musa or Moses. Injil, Al-Injil or the Gospel that was revealed to Isa or Jesus. Uh, peace be upon them all, Moses and Jesus and our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The Quran that was revealed to Muhammad, peace be upon them all. It may be in order to uh, say a word about the difference between Nabi and Rasul. In the Islamic context, a Nabi is a man sent by God to give guidance to man or to men, uh, to human beings, but not given a scripture. Then, a man sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but not given a scripture. Of course, given certain commands, certain things to teach to his people without a scripture, a scripture that was given him. Rasul is, Rasul we should believe or the belief in Rasul includes belief in all the messengers sent by Allah. Who is a Rasul? A Rasul is a messenger. All right. Then, brothers and sisters, what's the difference between Nabi and Rasul? Messenger, unlike a prophet and Nabi, all right, a Nabi is not given a scripture. Whereas a Rasul is given a scripture. Then we can sum up this. I hope I have not caused you any confusion. All messengers are considered or are actually prophets. All messengers who were sent with scriptures are prophets. But not all prophets are messengers. Why? Because not all of them have been given scriptures with them, then all prophets are sent by Allah, but without a scripture, but a messenger is a prophet who was sent with a scripture, and that's why we sum up the whole situation by saying that all messengers are prophets, but not all prophets are messengers. And those of you who are familiar with uh, logic can follow uh, this uh, quite easily. The Quran mentioned the names of some of the prophets. Not all of them, of course, but some of them. Um, let's just have a look at the screen and see the common name of some of the prophets in the English language and their Arabic equivalent. Then we have Abraham, Ibrahim, in Arabic, Ishmael or Ismail in Arabic, Isaac or Ishaq in Arabic, Jacob, Yaqub, David, Dawood, Jesus, Isa, and Muhammad, of course, and the um, 
best spelling of the name of our prophet blessing peace be upon him would be a capital M U H or an underlined H A double M A D as you can see on the screen Qiyama what's a Qiyama? Qiyama belief in the day of judgment and in resurrection that is life after death Al Qadr is belief in destiny or fate this covers the six articles of belief or faith and of course the opposite of belief or faith or al iman is and we take refuge in allah from this is al kufr al kufr is disbelief the opposite of belief the word is derived from the root ka fa ra and originally it means to cover to cover why because Al-Kufr covers belief in the case of someone who doesn't believe. In Arabic, the word Kufr implies different meanings. Ungratefulness, disbelief in Allah, and denial of the truth. It's most frequently used in the sense of disbelief in Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, viewers of Clearing the Mist, we come to the end of this episode and actually also the end of uh, our program. We have uh, been with each other for 30 uh, episodes and I really uh, do pray Allah Almighty uh, to give me the chance to meet you once again. As I said in the first uh, episode uh, clearing the mist means trying to lift or to remove as much unclarity as possible from some Islamic terms and I hope we have uh, managed to uh, choose some of the terms which uh, are uh, useful for you to familiarize yourself selves with some of the terms which you may not uh, have heard of or to add some pieces of information to the terms which are already familiar to you. I would like to thank uh, each and everyone who uh, generously gave of his time and effort to produce this uh, program including our director Mr. Haytham and the cameramen, the gentlemen who ha have been very patient and also the uh, team of uh, the preparation team who prepared the material, Mr. Muhammad uh, Adil and uh, Mr. Saleh and uh, uh, Mr. Osama Fadil and many other uh, people uh, who are very difficult to uh, mention without forgetting uh, any one of them. To all of them, I say thank you. And to you, I thank you for your attentive listening and I really pray uh, to Almighty Allah to enable me to meet with you once again. Uh, until then, أترككم في أمان الله ورعايته. I leave you in the care of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Such lust, love.